Hey guys, so today I've got something that's really pretty awesome, and if you remember a couple days ago I did a video of a $500 gaming PC that was directed towards playing Minecraft. Some of you said that $500 was a little bit high, and since you know you weren't old enough to get a job or whatever the reason may be, you wanted to see something you know around $250 to $300. Bucks. So right now I have designed a $250 gaming PC that will run Minecraft and even a bunch of other games which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, you know. It, decent settings and it'll be playable so this is a really awesome build that I just designed and I think you guys are going to like it so first off we have the AMD Semperon 3850 quad core 1.3 gigahertz processor so 1.3 gigahertz you're probably thinking isn't all that impressive but really I mean it's a quad core processor for twenty eight dollars and it's going to handle Minecraft and really any other games in some light video editing just fine. It's a really impressive processor for 28 bucks, and that sale, you know, it says it's usually 43 bucks, but that sale has been going on since I don't remember. I just remember that one of the one time I was looking up, you know, a, like a cheap PC build, and I saw this one, and it was still 28 bucks. I don't know why I didn't go with it. Oh, actually, I don't think I ever finished that video. I forget, but um, yeah, this is a really impressive processor, and for 28 bucks, I mean. I don't know anything that can beat it. I mean, it's extremely power power efficient, and really, if you want to overclock it, I mean, these Semperon processors overclock uh, fairly good, so you could probably overclock it to maybe even two gigahertz, and it's still not going to be putting out much heat. And also, it comes with a cooler, a CPU cooler inside this little box here. That's pretty awesome, especially since it's only twenty eight bucks. So, that is the processor, good stuff. Here we have a graphics card that I just barely managed to fit in, and this is the Asus Radeon HD 6450 2GB graphics card. So I managed to fit a 2GB graphics card in here that costs 56 bucks, usually 60 so not really much of a sale, but hey, there's a $10 rebate. Um, but yeah, this thing will, you know, it's a 2GB graphics card, so you have plenty of VRAM. Uh, the processor, the graphics processor on here, you know, on its, okay, I'm... Screwing up here and tripping over myself. The graphics processor on this card isn't all that you know all that powerful, but it isn't too bad, and you'll even be able to play games like Battlefield 4, Crisis 3. Although Crisis is going to be difficult, you have to lower your resolution and play on very low settings. But it's still playable. It'll handle games like that. It can definitely handle Minecraft. That'll be extremely easy for it. And if you're using something like Optifine, I brought this up in my $500 build. If you're using Optifine for a, or as a mod or whatever, uh, that'll you know improve the performance greatly, especially with the processor being a quad core. Uh, Minecraft usually doesn't utilize all its cores very well, and since this is running at 1.3 gigahertz per core, um, you know it's you know Minecraft by itself isn't going to run you know extremely well on it. It'll play. It'll definitely be playable on like low settings, but once you get Optifine installed, you're going to get a lot better performance. So just keep that in mind. And here we have the power supply. It's just a 300 watt Seasonic power supply, 80 plus bronze certified, meaning it's efficient. We don't really need a whole lot of power for this build because you know I don't. This card doesn't even require external power from the power supply. I don't believe. Nope. So, yeah. This doesn't require all that much power, and you know, this is, Seasonic makes really good power supplies. They're a reputable company. I personally prefer Corsair, but they really don't make anything this cheap and uh, this low power, 300 watts. So yeah, there you go. Uh, it's efficient, and it'll be sufficient for this build. Here we have the Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, 45 bucks, standard 500 gigabyte hard drive. You always go with the one terabyte hard drive since it's not really all that more expensive, 52 bucks. Um, I'm just using the 500 to keep it around $250, but uh, one terabyte is not a, ba a bad option to go with. But 500 gigabytes is still plenty if you're just going to be, you know, browsing the inter browsing the web, uh, playing Minecraft and maybe a couple other games. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, 500 gigabytes will get you by. And one terabyte is more if you're planning on, you know, playing a lot of games and downloading a lot of games or video editing. If you want to save and back up your videos and stuff like that, you know, you know what you needed for storage. So I'm just throwing all that out there, I guess. Uh, so let's move on. Here we have the Team Elite 4 gigabyte DDR3 1600 megahertz memory, RAM, whatever. 
Uh, it's just a single stick of memory, so you could always buy a second stick and put it on your motherboard and have eight gigabytes. It is only 30 bucks, so if you wanted to save up again and then get another stick of uh, this RAM, you can always do that. And uh, something to keep in mind is that you do not want to, uh, you know, buy this stick of RAM and then go ahead and see, like add in a second stick from a different company or even a different model because your timings will all get screwed up. And what's going to happen is that your motherboard's going to set both sticks of RAM to the lowest setting uh, of either of those gra or either of those uh, sticks of RAM, and then. Uh, it's going to be unstable and you could, you could blue screen and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll actually work, but you don't really want to mix and match mix and match RAM. Uh, if you're going to, you know, buy this and then, you know, upgrade to 8 gigabytes later, you would want to buy the exact same model. So just get a 4 gigabyte stick of RAM here and then later on get the exact same 4 gigabyte model, put it in and then you'd have 8 gigabytes and it'd work just fine. Here we have the case that I always use in these PC builds, and at least the budget ones. Uh, Rosewell FBM-01 uh, Dual Fan Micro ATX Mini Tower Computer Case. So this is just a really, really basic computer case, nothing really special about it. What I do like about this is that it's extremely cheap. Rosewell makes really great cases, and it comes with two fans in it right away. So you got this rear exhaust fan, and then you have your front intake fan up here. You know, it's like I said, it's just a really basic build. There's nothing uh, too special about it, but it'll hold everything, it'll work, and it comes with fans, and it's cheap. So that's what I like about it. Here, uh, last up, we have the Azrock AM1B-M uh, Socket AM1 motherboard. It comes with USB 3.0. It'll support the processor that I selected, and it is just, you know, a basic build. It even uh, it does come with USB 3.0, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and other than that, you know, it's just a really basic motherboard here. Nothing, again, to brag about. But it does. What I'm surprised about is that it actually does have USB 3.0, and it's extremely cheap. Usually, that's you know a little bit more expensive. But I guess USB 3.0 is starting to become, uh, you know, more common. So, yeah. Here we go. Whoa, that was weird. So yeah, some of the good things about this case, or not case, some of the good things about this build and some of the bad things about it. So the great thing about it, I guess, is that it's extremely cheap. It's cheaper than an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4. Uh, I think it's like the same price as a Wii U, but you're not limited to just gaming and browsing the web on it. You can do anything a regular computer can do. You can browse the web, you can game, you can, you know, write software. I mean, it's, uh, you can video edit. I mean, it's a computer and you can do whatever you want with it. And it's very cheap. But it really packs a punch for 250 bucks, or actually, I added it up, 253. Okay, it's $3 extra. The problem with a build like this is since it's using some older hardware to make it up, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to upgrade. So what I mean is that this here has the AM1 socket uh, from AMD, and that is fairly old. So if you were going to upgrade it to a processor that uses AM3, AM3 Plus, whatever you're going to have to change out your motherboard as well. Now it's usually, you know, with AMD, it's not a very costly upgrade. When you upgrade the motherboard and the processor, you can probably do it for like 200 bucks, but it's still, it can be a real pain in the butt to do. So uh, just keep that in mind. You know, upgrading can be a little bit more touchy with a, with a system like this since it is using some more older hardware. It's still hardware that's going to work very well and you're going to be able to play recent games with it but just keep that in mind upgrading is going to be fairly difficult other than that I mean you can use this motherboard to upgrade to overclock I mean uh, that processor Azeroth boards have always been really good for overclocking even though this is a little bit lower end uh, you know for a motherboard you do want to be careful when overclocking you don't want to do like some extreme overclock because like it you know it is a cheaper board but you can get a decent overclock and like I said earlier you could probably get this up to like 2 gigahertz and you know you'd be you'd be able to get better performance out of it and with a processor like this it would be a noticeable difference as well so you can always give that a shot if you're willing I don't recommend to do any overclocking if you haven't you know done it before I say do some research on it and you know be careful but AMD mother AMD uh, CPUs are very great when it comes to overclocking so I don't think you're gonna screw it up too bad unless you like 
you know, put insane voltages on it. But yeah, just do your research when it comes to overclocking uh, before you even attempt it. But yeah, all the links for these parts are in the description of this video. You can check them out. Like I said, it costs 253 bucks, and you're going to get a dedicated graphics card, 4 gigs of RAM, a quad-core processor, and USB 3.0, and 500 gigs of storage, and it's a very, very cheap build. This thing really packs a punch for the money, so I recommend giving it a, giving it a shot. Uh, you know, if this is like your first computer or whatever, and you know you want to try building one because that's what you have to do you have to order these all separately um, and then you have to build it and building it is actually you know it can be intimidating at first because you know it's a computer and you're probably thinking it's going to be very complex and difficult to do but once you get the hang of it and you know, just watch some videos on YouTube on how to build it uh, once you figure it out it's you know you, you notice that it's really actually easy because when I first started computer building, I was very nervous up, you know, just building my own computer uh, for the first time. But now I don't even think about it. If I just want to tear apart a computer or build one or whatever, I just do it. I don't know. It's just, you know, once you learn the insides of the computer, you know, it's not too difficult. So, uh, you know, like I said, it is very intimidating, but it is worth a shot, and it is really fun to do. And if you have somebody who knows how to do computer building, you know, you can ask them for advice and maybe even help you build it. I don't know. So, yeah, now I'm just kind of rambling. Like I said, links are in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you want to see, you know, a specific price point, that maybe even lower, I don't know if I could do that, but maybe even a little bit lower uh, or even higher, just leave your comments down below and I can attempt to do that. So, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.